it's Thursday. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin turtle. Fun fact, you don't really see orange pumpkins here in Australia. And here is my three seconds of proof because I'm not brave. Okay, you guys technically voted for pumpkin turtle and I have delivered pumpkin tortoise. So I acknowledge that I took a little creative liberty there, but I really hope you guys will forgive me for that just because I feel like tortoise makes so much more sense. Okay, so let's talk about tools and materials. So first up for this project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic in four different colors. They are for his stem, the pumpkin, the turtley bits in the leaf, and his little belly. You're also going to need a pair of 12 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, pins and needles, a pair of scissors, and some stuffing. But that's it. Okay, so this design started with a test pumpkin. As you might be aware, if you've been around long enough, that I have done giant pumpkins before. Uh, with mixed results, but this is the first time I've tried to do sort of little pumpkins and I never really liked the look of the lines like holding the pumpkin down. That wasn't really sort of what I wanted to go for. But then last week's Albert just presented me with the perfect solution to that problem uh, with how we did the feathers down the back legs and that is if we tuck those strands inside a series of front loops, can't even see it really on the finished pumpkin and you still get that lovely segmented look. I, know, I realize this probably isn't a new idea, but I do deliberately try to avoid encountering how other people have solved problems because solving the puzzle is most of the fun for me. I, I apologize if I'm presenting things as like, ooh, grand innovations when everyone's like, yeah, we all do that. Anywho, so I started with this pumpkin here, but then I thought it was maybe a little bit big for what I wanted. So I wanted to make a mini project, which is how I arrived at this little guy. All right, so first up today, we are going to start by making the pumpkin. Now the pumpkin and its stem is all one piece. So we're going to start with the stem, and then we're going to change to our orange and work up the rest of the gourd. Is it a fruit? Yeah, it's apparently a berry. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to grab some of our brown and we're going to start by working up the stem. So that is our stem worked up and now we're going to change to our orange. This is the only color change you have to do for this whole pattern. I've tried to really simplify down this week, make it a little bit more accessible. So first things first, we always change our color in the stitch before we need the color to be active. So what I've just done there is I've frogged the last stitch I did in my brown. I'm then going to insert my hook into that final stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop of my old color. You can see both loops on the hook there. I'm going to hold that color out of the way down the hook. And I'm going to grab a strand of the color I'm changing to, which is your pumpkin color, your orange. I'm going to hold that down the length of the hook as well, just like that. So I'm pinching both colors at the base of the stitch. I'm going to yarn over with my new color and pull it through those two loops. I'm then going to give a gentle tug on the two tails to tighten that stitch up and make it sit nicely. And there you have your new color active on your hook. And I am just going to trim the brown off. And I'm going to take these two tails and I'm going to tie them in a knot. Which will just stop any slipping. And then trim them off a little bit shorter. And tuck those ends inside the stem. Like so. So now your orange is on your hook and we're ready to go with the next round of stitches. We're going to start by putting an increase into each of the stitches around. So you've got this little funny Halloween themed top hat there, just like that. Bringing in my big pumpkin here to demonstrate. So for the rest of the rows of the pumpkin, we'll be building in the structure that will allow us to create these segments. As you may or may not be aware, stitches have a front loop, which is on the outside of the piece, and they have a back loop, which falls on the inside of the piece. So we're marked in the pattern, you will only be working through the back loops. So for each of the rows, we'll be repeating a set of instructions six times around. And basically, as marked in the pattern, the first stitch of every repeat will be in the back loops only. So that is the first row of honestly many, but as we work through them, you'll start to see these little lines of front loop only stitches appearing, and there should be six of them around your pumpkin. So you can see on the finished turt here that uh, they are on a slight diagonal. That is because I'm working as a continuous spiral. Now, I don't consider the trade-off of working in a different way to try and stop that to be worth the end result. So long story short, we are working in a continuous spiral and the lines on your pumpkin may drift ever so slightly to the right. Okay, so you should pause now and work up the rest of your pumpkin. And then for the last row of the pumpkin, we are working in back post, which means we are working around the post of the stem from the back of the stitch back to the back of the stitch. 
I should mention that the back post stitching here does make it easier to form the pumpkin in my opinion, but if you don't like back post, they are not necessary for the final look of the piece. So you can just do 30 single crochet around if you would prefer. All right, so now comes the magic trick where we turn this into this. Note that your pumpkin is not currently stuffed. There's a couple of different techniques you can employ for this. You can use a plastic darning needle or you can use your crochet hook for it. And I'm going to be using my brown for this because I want it to stand out just a little bit. So the first technique is using your hook. And what I'm going to do is starting from the bottom, I'm going to insert my hook under the back post stitch that we did. So those two stitches that are sticking out and then up the entire column of remaining front loops, including that little one at the top. So there we go. So I have all of them loaded on my hook, just like that. I'm then going to grab my brown with my hook and pull it through all of those loops, just like so. You wanna leave one to two inches sticking at the bottom just to help you work with it in a minute. And then I'm going to cut the yarn off so that the remaining yarn at the top is as long as the yarn that is through the pumpkin loops. I'm then going to insert my hook up through the middle and out the top, yarn over that extra strand and pull it down inside your pumpkin, just like so. So that is the first technique you can use to get set up, ready to pumpkinize this little orange cap. And the other method you can use is with the darning needle, thread it with some of your brown. Basically just do the same thing as we just did with the hook, but just with the needle instead. Some people might find it easier to work with this way. Just make sure that you get through all of those loops. And then once you're at the top, you can just thread the needle down and out through the middle of the pumpkin. Okay, so for the rest of these stripes around, I'm just going to prep them without pulling the strand down into the middle of the pumpkin, just to stop it getting too confusing. So just like that. So the reason that I've just left those out the top and I should have done it with one of the others as well is because we're going to be pulling on these in pairs and it's just easier this way to tell which strand goes with which pair. So there we go, there is my first pairing. And what I'm going to be doing now is holding the two strands and pushing the orange up. Now you don't wanna do this super tightly, but what you do wanna do is just collapse it down so that those front loops that we threaded our yarn through close most of the way so that they're almost touching each other. You don't, don't be excessively tight with this. There is um, no reason to like force it past the point it wants to naturally sit at. Then I'm going to tie one knot and tie two knots. Trim these off a little shorter and they will be covered up in the process of attaching the belly. So don't worry too much about those. If you are worried about them being visible, I'll show you on the next one how we can hide them away even more secretively. All right, so that's my strand. Which one do you belong to? Let's give it a little tug and see. This one. Excellente. Okay, excellent. All right, so this time, I'm gonna hide it a little more carefully. And in order to do that, all I'm going to do is take the top, the strand that's sticking out the top. And before I do any pulling or anything like that, I'm just going to tuck it through that last row of stitches so that it's hidden away inside. And you can do this either way, either way works just as well. And I'm going to once again, grab my two strands and push. So I've pushed a little bit. I'm sticking my fingers inside and poking things out to see how they're going to be sitting because I don't want to pull things too tightly. Again, we like, like we're making a pumpkin, we're not making a squash. <laughs> uh, I'm not sorry. Um, there we go. So that's about the right. It's about the right level of squish. And then I'm just going to tie my double knot again. Except for this time, because we pulled it through that row of stitches, the knot it's completely tucked away on the inside. And you'll see that we are starting to get that nice sort of bobbly texture on top where we've pulled those two strands. So now what we're going to do is just repeat that process around the rest of the pumpkin. So there is all six sides pushed in. So there is all six strands once they've been pulled and sort of tucked away. You'll note that like two of my knots are on the outside, the rest I tucked inside just to show that either way really does work. And what I've also done is once again, reached inside in between there's a lot of tight strands happening in there at the moment i've just gone inside and poked the, each segment out so that it's not crumpled in now you'll note that it is a little wrinkly and wavily on the bottom and that's fine you're going to expect a little bit of that but once you pop each of your segments out it should be starting to look 
very pumpkin-y. So now it's time to stuff it. And to do that, take a little bit of stuffing at a time and stuff each segment individually. In doing so, you'll make sure that your pumpkin has a nice puffy shape, as well as making sure that all of it is stuffed because with that many pieces of yarn inside, there's a pretty good chance of like missing a portion of it. And you'll note that what I'm doing is I'm also making sure that I curve up and under to get the bottom side of the pumpkin as well. So it's kind of a this motion. Mine's out of the gutter, people. All right, once you're happy having stuffed all six segments, we are going to stuff a little bit down the middle as well, just like that. So there is your pumpkin. And I would encourage you to embrace any kind of crookedness that appears with it. Like with this one here, my stem kind of wants to lilt to one side. I've obviously pulled one side a little bit tighter than the other. And I'm just going to embrace that in the course of the turtle because things in nature are not perfect and we don't have to be either. So with that, there is your pumpkin finished. And now we are going to pop that to one side and start working on the turtle. All right, so now we're going to be making some turtley bits. And what I mean by that is we have four feet, a tail and a head to make. So we're going to start with the head piece. So we start by working up the head. With the first five rows worked up, we are now going to position the eyes. So where your loop currently is, is the underside of the head. So we're gonna smush that flat with it roughly in the middle. And then your eyes are going to go three to four rows back from your starting magic ring. And keep in mind that uh, it's a little tight inside that head. The head is not very big. So there is the first eye. I'm just gonna snap the back on. Then I'm just going to position the second eye and you might find that you have to stagger the eyes. So the stem of this one is currently facing down here and this one here is facing forward, but they do both fit inside that little head. I'm just gonna flip it out and snap the back on. Like so. And that's what that looks like inside at the moment. So now we are going to do some short rows to work up the back of the head. Now they are constructed basically by not working the full way around the piece and instead stopping and turning where indicated. So that's the eight stitches of the next row and then I'm going to chain one and turn and I'll be working back along the stitches we just placed. And just like that. So you'll see that we've worked up kind of this little cup on the back of the head. And that is what's going to allow us to curve that neck downwards. For the next row, we'll be working around the full circle. The first two stitches will be placed in the ends of those short rows we just worked. So one and two, just like that. We'll then be working three front post stitches along the underside of the head. Front post is when you insert your hook from the front of the piece back to the front of the piece. We are then going to work two stitches up the sides of those short rows again which should bring us back to the three decreases we worked in the previous row. And we're just going to put a single crochet into each of them. And three. And with that, we have completed the turn of the head. So at this point, we've got our head, the curve at the back of it. And now we are just going to work up a little neck at the base of that. Okay, so there's your finished head and we're going to roll from that straight into the feet which are worked from the base of the foot up. I think that's as good a vantage point as any. <laughs> and you are going to need four of those. Okay, so we're making some pretty good progress but all we have to do now is work up the tail which we start at the tip and work down towards the base. And we don't stuff the tail at all. So the final bit we need to make before we start assembling is this little yellow belly patch that's going to hold all of these bits in place. Now we work that up as a pretty basic oval shape. Okay, so now we have all the pieces that we need to make our base turtle. All right, so one thing to know about the assembly of this is that we have six turtle bits and we have six creases in between pumpkin chunks. Segments of gourd. Oh God, sections of pumpkin, sorry. And so basically each one of the turtley bits is going to be attached inside one of the pumpkin creases. All right, now with this pumpkin, as I mentioned before, I've made it just a little bit on the crooked side and I've decided that I want the, the tall side to be at the front of my turtle. You should examine your own pumpkin and decide which side you think is appropriate for the head as well. Now with all of these pieces, We've only stuffed to about the halfway point, leaving two to three rows at the top empty so that they can be squished flat. 
And that is because those bits of the pieces are going to be tucked up underneath under the yellow plate. So we need them to sit pretty flat, but we also need them to exist to help us attach the pieces. All right, so we're gonna start with the headpiece and I'm just going to start by lining the flat piece at the base of his neck up with that pumpkin opening. I'm then going to bend the neck up and around. I'm gonna chuck a few pins up here as well, like so. Okay, so next up we're gonna grab the legs. Now, each of them should slope in a specific direction. So you'll see that there's an almost little foot shape on each of them. And for your turtle feet, you're gonna want that facing outwards, maybe slightly forwards, that's a personal choice kind of thing. But identify what you want to be facing the front of your turtle and then squish the, the couple of rows that we left empty of stuffing at the top flat in that direction. So the first front leg is gonna go into the crease directly next to the neck. It doesn't matter if you wanna to work to the left or to the right, both of them will have a front leg in them. And what I'm gonna do is line the squished part of the leg up with the edge of the pumpkin. I'm gonna hold it there with my thumb and I'm gonna bend it upwards into a foot position. You know me and my crochet agami, I cannot help myself. I'm then going to pin it very firmly at the knee into that crease with the foot pointing in the direction that will be down. Just like that. So you see how, how secure that is in there and it's sitting downwards. I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side, okay? So foot facing forward, squished flat bit, lining up with the edge of the pumpkin, holding it with my thumb and bending it up, holding the whole piece in place. Is this me overcomplicating things? Probably. And pin it thoroughly at that knee to the crease. So there are our two little front feet pinned into place. They should be facing downwards as good feet do. And we're gonna repeat that process with the back legs. So again, foot facing forward. We're working in the next crease down, holding it, folding it. The hold and fold. Techniques nobody asked for and nobody needs. And last but not least, we've got another crease over here that is destined for this leg. So there are the legs. They should support your little tort. Last but not least, we have our little tail. And it is going to go in the final crease at the back. Again, line the open edge of it up with the open edge of the pumpkin. And we're going to pin that in place as well. Now the next step will be sewing those pieces on. However, uh, just as a check that you can do, grab your yellow belly disc and make sure that if you pop that over the top, it should cover all of the raw ends of the many pieces that we've just pinned into place. And mine does, so I'll pop that off. And now I'm gonna use some of my turtle color to sew on each of the pieces. So I'm going to start, I'm gonna work up and around the back of the head and then down. I'm gonna make sure that the base is secured on nicely. And then I'm going to do the same thing to each of the legs, sewing them on to making sure that they are holding their position. One thing I will just add, if you're having trouble with your feet, staying in place. I've sewn on all three of these. I'm just working on this last one now. So I've sewn on the base, so just along here, and I've put a stitch in the knee, but it is still sticking out at a weird angle. And I just thought I'd show you a little trick that I'm using, just because, look, I, I know a lot of you ask for sewing tutorials, but I don't think you realize exactly how much of what I do is just stabbing the needle in and out. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to sewing very well. but. Basically what I've done is I've put a little stitch in the base of the leg. I want this foot to curl over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch a couple of rows up there. And not unlike the beholder eyes we were working on a couple of weeks ago, we're just gonna pull that up and into position. And I can do that again as well if I want. And that should help it hold its position, just pull basically sewing the underside of the leg to the, the top part of the green is what I've done there. Okay, now all of these pieces should pass what I call the tug test, which is just if you give it a pull, does it come loose? No, so all of those pieces are now attached firmly where I want them to be. So we're gonna finish all of this off. We're going to make sure all of those little loose tails are tucked away nicely in there. And we're gonna grab our belly oval. So you'll note that it's longer one way and that, that way should run from the head to the tail. So just lay that piece over the top and I'm just going to pin it between each of the pairs of legs and then see how I'm pinning through the stitch and we're going up there on either side of the neck.
and then on either side of the tail as well. And now we're going to grab some yellow and sew that on. Now you can literally just sew this on when we've placed the six pins if you're really not feeling sewing at the moment or you can sew around the whole edge to attach it a little more firmly. So just one little stitch there, thread my needle through to the other side of the neck. Couple of little stitches there, through to in between the legs. And then finish off and tuck all of your ends in nice and neatly. Okay, so that is the base turtle. Uh, you could definitely stop there and be perfectly happy with how your little turt is coming. Now I did weigh up whether or not I should include the little vine and the leaf in the pattern just because this is the most free form piece that follows absolutely no kind of measurable structure that I've ever kind of come up with. But I'm gonna give it a go. And you can let me know in the comments whether or not I should have left it off. So we'll start with this little spirally bit, which is surprisingly easy to create. And I'm sure it's something that a lot of you have seen done before. So we're going to grab a little bit of our brown. And what I'm going to do is leaving a tail of about 10 centimeters, or let's see, what's that? About five to six inches. So about that long. I'm going to slip knot onto my hook. Now I believe this is called something along the lines of like a foundation single crochet or something. So I believe this technique is considered a replacement for using a base chain, but I'm using it today to create a little spiral. I think anyone who makes jellyfish might be familiar with this anyway. And what I'm going to do is rather than chaining is I'm going to stitch directly over that long tail we just left. So this is my active strand. It's still attached to the, oh, sorry, didn't mean to slip you off. Uh, this is our active strand. It's attached to our ball of yarn. And this is our tail that we're going to be stitching over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold that tail so that we can work over it. I'm gonna put my hook under it and yarn over. I'm pinching the base of that to hold everything steady. This first stitch is the trickiest. Yarn over and pull through both loops and lock in that stitch. So that's our first single crochet. And we're going to do that 24 times in total across this stitch. So that's still the tail. I'm still holding it as though it was the piece of work we're working into. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop over the top of it. Yarn over. And stitch. I find it always really hard to look up the, the official terms for crochet techniques when you're kind of just messing around and figuring things out. Now, if you're, the tail that you started with is too short, don't worry too much if you can't fit all 24 stitches. As long as you get sort of around 18 to 24, you should be able to like get a long enough vine. Any shorter than that, and it might not be really that visible, and any longer than that, you're gonna end up with a really long one, which I guess also isn't a problem. Okay, and last one there. So those are my 24 stitches. And that is what's remaining of my tail. So this is the fun bit, okay? <laughs> it's another little magic trick. We're gonna grab what's left of that tail and we're gonna pull it. And we're gonna pull it until we can't really pull it anymore. Then we're just going to come along and form this into a spiral, which it should quite happily go into. Just give it a little t twist. And there is your little pumpkin vine. <laughs> okay, so I am now going to finish off pulling both ends through that loop in order to do so. So there is the little vine. Pop that to one side. And now we're going to make the leaf. Everybody had their coffee? You're gonna need it, okay. Okay, and now we're going to create our little pumpkin leaf. So I'm gonna make mine in my turtle color as well. You can use a different shade of green or really any other color that you like. This is almost a little crochet along type segment. Ready? So we're going to start by chaining six. like so. I'm then going to turn my work and working down that chain, I'm gonna put five single crochet. So I'm gonna start in the second chain from my hook. And we're just gonna put one single crochet into each chain until we're back at the base. Okay, 
not so hard so far. We are then going to chain one and turn and working back up the single crochet we just did, I'm going to put two single crochets. So one, two. We're going to leave the rest of that row unworked. That's finished now. So I'm going to chain three. And we're going to turn and we're going to work into those three chains we just did. So skip the first one and working in the second chain from our hook. I'm going to be working through both loops of that chain, but if you're not comfortable doing that, a single loop will work just as well. I'm going to put a single crochet into each of the two remaining chains. Like that. And then another single crochet into one of the two single crochets from the previous row. So that is what our piece currently looks like. I'm now going to chain three again. I'm going to turn and skipping the chain closest to our hook. I'm going to put two single crochet down. So see how we have this middle leaf here? The next single crochet is going to go in the base of that. So right there. So that's what that currently looks like at the end of step five. So step six, what we're going to be doing is putting some single crochets to work back around to our starting point there. So I'm going to put one in the very base of the leaf. And then one in that starting point. Just like so. And then I'm going to chain three. Then turning and working down those chains, starting in the second chain from our hook, I'm going to put a single crochet into each of them. I'm going to slip stitch back to that starting point. And now we have one final leaf to make, so I'm going to chain three again. Turn, skipping the first chain closest to our hook. Put a single crochet into the other two chains. And slip stitch back to the, the next stitch up from our starting point, if I'm honest. There we go. Now, finish off leaving a little tail so you can hide it nicely. So there is my best attempt at bringing you a pumpkin leaf. So we should have our starting tail and our finishing tail, and we're going to weave both of those back to the base of the leaf. By that I mean sort of we have this one long side, and in the middle of that is what I'm going to be terming the base. It's where if a stem was attached, that would be where it was attached. <laughs> so I'm just weaving it in and out to disguise it amongst the other stitches, like so. So now we have our little vine and a little leaf to go with it. Now I did toy with making this little leaf a little leaf hat, because I mean, that's adorable. But, but for now I'm going to just show you how I attach it to the stem. So we're going to attach the leaf to the vine first. We're just going to do that using our tails. So pick a point on the vine that you like, pull both of those tails through it. And then again, into the leaf, just circle through a few times to really secure it nicely. And then anything left, you're going to weave in and out of the vine stitches till it's nicely tucked away and then trim off any excess. Like so. So now we have a vine with a leaf on it. it may not be the best positioned leaf, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> and next up, we're just going to attach our vine to the stem. So we have these two long tails, and I'm just going to insert my hook through the top of that pumpkin stem that's already attached to the pumpkin and pull both of those through. I like mine at the front, just like that. I think it gives him a jaunty look. I'm going to tie these two in a knot. You can, of course, choose to sew on these two pieces, but I found that this was way easier than messing around with a needle and thread. Ah, I'm feeling fancy. I'm going to tie it in a double knot. Then I'm just going to tuck these two ends away. And there is your finished pumpkin turtle. Okay, bye!